Diffie-Hellman protocol is an asymmetric encryption algorithm which allows two parties to establish a shared secret over an unsecured medium. Here we have two users, the blue user and the green user. And let's just say these two users have to somehow agree upon a secret number. The problem with simply communicating that over the wire is that they don't know who else is listening in on it. That is where Diffie-Hellman comes into play. What Diffie-Hellman allows these two users to do is exchange certain values and then combine the values which are exchanged with other values which were never exchanged to produce a shared secret. Anybody listening in on the wire will have heard these public values, but there's no way to combine just these public values to get the shared secret. That is what Diffie-Hellman allows you to do. Keep in mind, the shared secret itself is never transmitted. These two users are never going to send 42 across the wire, because then everybody will know about it. Instead, they share other values that are used to derive that secret. So let me show you how that works with an example. We're going to do Diffie-Hellman together using Alice and Bob. All the math that Alice is going to do is going to be included in this blue box, and all the math that Bob is going to do is going to be included in this orange box, and anything that happens in the middle, everybody knows about it that might have been listening in on the wire. So here is how Alice and Bob are going to establish a shared secret. First, they're going to agree upon two numbers a prime number and a generator of that prime number. For our example, we're going to use 13 as our prime and 6 as our generator. We're going to call these values P and G. Then Alice and Bob are each going to independently randomly generate a private key. For the sake of this example, Alice is going to generate randomly the number 5 and Bob randomly generated the number 4. They're then going to use their private values in combination with these values to calculate their public key. They're going to take the generator, in this case 6, raise it to their private values, 5 and 4 respectively, and then figure out the remainder when divided by 13. So Alice will do this calculation. She's going to take 6 and raise it to the fifth power, then she'll figure out the remainder when divided by 13. That gets her an answer of 2. Bob is going to do the same thing, except he's going to use his own private value. He's going to take the generator, 6, and raise it to his private value of 4, then figure out the remainder when divided by 13, and that's going to get him 9. Now that both parties have these public values, they're then going to exchange these public values with one another. Anybody listening in on the wire will also hear what these public values are. Then Alice and Bob are going to combine the public value that was shared with their private values to finally attain the shared secret. So from Alice's perspective, this is what she's going to do. She's going to take 9, which was Bob's public value, and raise it to the fifth power, which is her private value. Then she's going to figure out the remainder when divided by 13, which was our prime number, and the result of that is 3. Bob is now going to do the same thing, and hopefully he is also going to land on the number 3. He's going to take 2, which was Alice's public value, raise it to the fourth power, which was his own private value, and then figure out the remainder when divided by 13. The result of that will also be 3. Notice Alice and Bob landed on the same shared secret, the number 3, and anybody else listening in on the wire will have only heard the numbers 13 and 6 and 2 and 9, and there's no way to combine 2, 9, 6, and 13 consistently to get the shared secret of 3. That is the Diffie-Hellman exchange. Again, it allows two parties to establish a shared secret over an unsecured medium. That shared secret is then used to generate any amount of symmetric keys. Typically, the shared secret is not directly used as a symmetric key, but it's used as a seed value to calculate an unlimited amount of symmetric keys for symmetric encryption or HMAC keys for data integrity. But how secure is Diffie-Hellman? Well, the security of Diffie-Hellman lies in the discrete logarithm problem. So let me explain that. First, I'm going to explain logarithm, and then I'll tell you what discrete means. So here is an exponentiation problem. In an exponentiation problem, you know g and x, and you're trying to solve n, which is pretty easy to do this direction. A logarithm problem is sort of the opposite. In a logarithm problem, you know g and n, and you're trying to solve x. It's sort of like doing an exponentiation backwards. Now, note that I said logarithms are difficult. I didn't say impossible. 
that's where the discrete word comes in. Discrete does both of these things, but it hides it behind a modulo operation or a remainder operation. For example, discrete exponentiation means you know g, x, and p, and you're trying to solve n, which is pretty easy to do this way. We actually did this a few times in the math just a second ago. But a discrete logarithm problem, you know g, p, and n, and you're trying to figure out x. And there is no simple way to solve a discrete logarithm problem. The only way is to pretty much try every single combination, i.e. brute force. And the idea behind Diffie-Hellman is to use numbers so big that it would take an attacker thousands and thousands and thousands of years to brute force your key. So that is the security of Diffie-Hellman. The main takeaway for this lesson is understanding the overall purpose of Diffie-Hellman, which is it allows two parties to establish a shared secret over an unsecured medium. I would also encourage you to try a few iterations of Diffie-Hellman yourself using this prime number and generator just to prove it to yourself that it works the way we said it did. Either way, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. I want to thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Hey YouTube, if you enjoyed that lesson, then you'll also enjoy the full course that it came from, Practical TLS. It's a deep dive into SSL and TLS, taught methodically and intentionally, full of easy illustrations and in the simplest way possible. You'll get to learn cryptography, certificates, private keys, the handshake, OpenSSL, and everything you need to become an SSL expert. To learn more, check out pracnet.net slash TLS, and if you need more convincing that this is the best TLS training course, then check out the other free lesson previews on YouTube. Thank you, and have a great day.